Kind sir. Don't do, say, don't do that, dude. I say kind sir, good sir. What I, I say <laughs> earlier. It's creepy either way. Kind, you say it. kind sir. <laughs> Let me introduce you to episode 105 of this oh. podcast. I don't know what I'm doing. Why do I want to leave? This isn't my job. Dude, he's been on. Uh, he's, been, he's been in rare form. Uh, he tried to. He argued that no dance has ever been impressive for a while. No. <laughs> and then we had to get. We had to start. We had to look up the. We had to look up the definition of impressive. Not, it was. Like, it was too much pleasantry. Wow. We've been wait, We've been around for a while. There are plenty of high skilled. It was just disgusting, <laughs> mainly. I guess how I associate what impressed means to me. How what did I you view... just eat or drink like half an hour before this? I, I had a chicken wrap that Eric thought I said rabbit, and then it just kind of <laughs> fired from there. I have a we bird did. infestation in my home right now, in my roof. I feel like I could catch a bird, but a rabbit I could never catch. W with your hands? No. I, I, I said with like a McDonald's bag and a net. I, if you give me a day <laughs> and a bag of McDonald's that had fries in it at one point, maybe even one fry, just to make it like super extra spicy on that trap, I could catch me a seagull. How do I hire you to do this tomorrow? Buy me a net, I guess. <laughs> and a bag of McDonald's. Eric, Eric, can we Amazon him a butterfly <laughs> net? Is it going to fit in his mail slot or whatever? No, like it'll be fine. Or Not with all the bovril in there. <laughs> so I, I may have killed somebody by accident. <laughs> Potentially. Oh. Go ahead. So last episode, where I think it was last one, I don't know. This doesn't make any sense to me. I talked hey, about hold how on. I had... Okay, hold go on. Ahead. Before yeah. you do that, mm -hmm. hello and welcome to another episode of the F*** Face Podcast. My name is Jeff Ramsey. With me, as always, uh, Gavin Free and uh, newly confessed murderer Andrew Panton. Go ahead. So now before I get into my murder Could story, I'd like, to, I'd like to pivot for a minute to something else and just own up because <laughs> I'm a big, I'm an accountability guy. <laughs> I want to own up to the fact that I was wrong. I was wrong last week. I was in the wrong. I handled the name thing incorrectly. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize to you both. This is, I wanted to give my perspective on it because I, I, I thought about it. I put some time in, really think you, about Andrew, the situation as a whole. You were, you were so wrong. This apology is I, annoying me. <laughs> no, I, was, I couldn't have been more in the wrong. Why are you annoyed by my apology? Oh, uh, it's, you know, it's just bringing it up again. Well, because I just... Oh, I, the... F uh, uh, Greg from... F account, Greg, the Greg, Greg from Finance. Finance. I had no yeah, idea yeah, yeah. what you were talking about. I had completely yeah. forgot about that. Were Greg you just accounting. sitting silently? Like, yeah, while I was, he was just trying to put oh, it... Okay. I was just trying to put it together and be like, what fucking name thing? And then uh, Nick said Jeopardy rules. And I was like, oh, did we do a Jeopardy? And I, I was just out of it. All right, sorry. Yeah, that's <laughs> Andrew, right. You were a bit of a dick about the name thing. Yeah, but I, was, I, I appreciate. Well, I, was I appreciate the apology. Because I, I, I was getting riled up with... <laughs> You're right. You're right. It was a ridiculous. It was a ridiculous position to have and to hold. <laughs> what happened was I was so excited about the thing, and I thought we're gonna give clues. We're gonna make this. We're really gonna turn up the heat in these next three episodes. Will you guys figure out the name? Will you not? We will find out. I give one clue, and Gavin immediately gets it, and I was on tilt. <laughs> I was on tilt from that moment forward, and I didn't want it to end. But I also deep down knew that you guys would never fairly guess Greg again in a different context. It would so have I like taken 700 more episodes before we realized how close we were. I also never in my head, I had the, the Jeopardy rules. I never established those. That's unfair of me. If I would have from the beginning stated that, I think that'd be fair. But that was unfair. Of me. <laughs> so I just wanted I, I, put, I put some thought into it and I've been haunted by that moment since we recorded not because of that itself that was uh, just I, I processed i realized ah, i was wrong i handled that poorly what has haunted me is jeff was coming at me and i was getting mad at jeff and we're going back and forth <laughs> and and i called you the dictionary kid which is the dumbest thing i may have said on the show and I, as soon as I said it, I winced, and I have not been able to stop thinking about the fact I said dictionary, and I couldn't think of, I could, I was thinking piss boy, I was like, where should I go with this, I need another word off of dictionary, and kid came out, and uh, that's an apology to the audience, that I said dictionary, because I've been, I've been I think suffering. I got a big laugh, though. I've been suffering, oh, well, did. maybe you did, but I just... It was such a we lame laughing at, not laughing. Yeah, at. it was a bad. Oh. It was a bad. It was a bad moment. Well, I'm typically good under fire, but enjoy the next seven days, um, because that's how long you have until that episode comes out. Oh, great! <laughs> that's fine. I'm Dude. sure people will be mad, but that's okay. When you said <laughs> that's on hey, me, you, I fucked that up. <laughs> when you said dictionary kid, it reminded me when you said it. It 
sounded like the name of like a late 60s, early 70s Disney made for TV movie. <laughs> did. And I yeah. wanted to bring that up, but I uh, I didn't get a chance. <laughs> I, say, I genuinely winced as soon as I said it. And I had thoughts about asking Nick to remove it from the edit. But I was like, that's so bad. I just got to live. I got to live with that. As I was thinking, piss boy, and what's something that like is like boy, and this kid came out. It was an unfortunate moment, but I'm happy to get past it. And I guess I should now talk about how I may have killed somebody, which is the yeah. point of how this started. Yeah. Well, before you I, do that, let me just okay, say that was yeah, a yeah. that was an extremely regulation apology. Uh, Thank you. And and I would like to provide, uh, I, I would like to accept it in the most regulation of ways. I appreciate that Absolutely. quite a bit. Um. No, you're you killed. So I was saying, yeah, with with the candies, I brought up recently that I've discovered Skittles gummies, specifically the Wildberry gummies. <laughs> Big fan of them. I love them. I recommended them to a friend. He bought a box of twelve. He didn't like them as much as me, so he just ended up with ten that he didn't like. But I love them. I ordered them to my house. It's the very first time since I've been here. I got robbed. Somebody what? stole my Skittles gummies. They got left outside of my front door by Amazon and they ripped through all of my boxes and I was both upset that they stole the Skittle <laughs> gummies that I was so excited about and then also offended at what they left behind. Like they, I felt judged by the person who robbed me. They didn't take the Sour Patch Kids. They didn't take the iced tea I bought. I was hurt. <laughs> it made me you feel got, like I had bad taste. Like the person clearly. Rob- I got robbed. You got they robbed said, by potheads. <laughs> they didn't get far they're around somewhere i guarantee you do you think they would have left the bovro uh, i i think they would have i they would have left everything if the first thing they encountered was the bovro <laughs> they just would have left they would d- d- determine that the box is not worth stealing from if that was the first item that the they ultimate pulled. deterrent get all these glitter bobs out of here just need a <laughs> pop, pop roll. i would be so mad if i stole a box and it shot bovril at me it's just you can't you're stuck <laughs> you're just marked bovril ball it's terrible but i so i stole i was really upset about it and then it came out like two days ago that mars had a massive recall because their skittles gummies contain pieces of metal in them Oh, and the person that I recommended try the gummies, all of their gummy packs were in that order. They had to throw away their 10 bags of gummies because they all could what possibly kind of contain. I, I'm not sure, but there was a recall on them because they contain small pieces of metal, apparently. And so now <laughs> I don't know what happened to the person. Mine could have been filled with metal and someone else stole them and ate them. I hope they're OK. They could have saved me. Maybe they're my Metal's hero. I don't know. Trends. Dude, that pothead saved your life. Potentially, or I killed a pothead unknowingly. <laughs> Either, it's the same thing. <laughs> One of the two, I guess, yeah. I didn't mean to, but two sides of the same coin. The, the important thing is we're talking to you, not them. You know what's worse? Maybe like this is the greatest insight about me. I felt way more dread about the fact that I said dictionary kid than I potentially killed this guy that stole the skill. <laughs> the guns. <laughs> one was an accident. The other one came more out of your mouth on purpose. You know? Yeah, the cringe ranks fair. higher than murder. <laughs> on uh, your conscience. <laughs> <laughs> Not in all cases. In this one, it did. Oh, God. So that's been sort of my last few days. How have, how have things been for you guys? Oh, good, man. Uh, Gav, how have you been? Uh, yeah, pretty good. I, I was just, uh, <laughs> I was just filling a big balloon. Uh, and you, you would think that the balloon would be what exploded. The hose exploded. <laughs> Are you <What>? serious? <laughs> yeah. Was <laughs> <that damage? laughs> Did anybody get hurt? No, it just exploded. Now, when you say huh. exploded, was it exciting exploded or it just like ruptured and it started leaking out the side? Like what, what type of explosion are we talking? Oh, he has a video. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Here we go. All right. I was like, I didn't think that was a tough question. The, the, the silence. Whoa. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. That's cool. That, yeah, that's certainly an explosion. Uh, that was pretty recent. That was about uh, 18 minutes ago. How old is that hose? Uh, it was bought yesterday. Oh. Wow. So it's clearly you- had a m- manufacturer's defect. Yeah, I think there may have been some metal strands in that hose. Because <laughs> <laughs> it went pop. How many hoses do you have? Did was, were you fucked? Did you have a replacement? Uh, no, that was the replacement for a shittier oh. hose, but we were <laughs> then relegated back to the shit hose. But it was fine. Okay. We got by. You know That's you can great. Amazon Prime now something over pretty easily. Uh, yeah. 
bit of tight window. I just, it was the last thing I was expecting. Yeah, I, I was like looking at the balloon and I heard a pop and suddenly the balloon was still there. Very confusing. I think in all the time I've spent in hardware stores and stores in general, I don't think I've ever heard anyone frantically buy a hose. It's a rare <laughs> item that people would ever need in an immediate... <laughs> Like, I couldn't imagine, like, the fire department running in, like, yeah, get, get any hose! You have any hose! <laughs> All of imagine. ours explode. That feels like such a Michael Bay movie moment. Firefighters using their hose and they explode. They have to go to, like, Home Hardware or Home Depot or whatever, buy more hoses. Yeah, the, the reason you use a hose is typically for a very slow problem. Like, my plant yeah. is dying very slowly over time. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> suddenly needing one. Unless you're going to drive away from a fire. I want to see somebody fight a fire with a crazy daisy. Just crazy daisy in their head and flop it around. <laughs> well, Eric wrote, that's how I imagined a snake would it. So, I, yeah, I felt the exact same. It looked very snake-like. What do you mean? Why to, would you imagine that? I don't know. It makes sense, right? It, it looks like sense. a snake. Yeah. Like yeah. when the, when a snake eats a hippo and it's too big and it just yeah. bursts out the side. Yeah. It gets too far because it's not the beginning of the snake that explodes. It gets too far into the snake and that part of the snake is too thin. And then the snake <laughs> just pops and then rolls around for a while. It, it's probably got a weakened tummy from eating all those Skittles gummies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was trying to think if like from Anaconda. Because I, I do agree, Gavin, it's sort of a weird thought, but I feel like I've seen a snake explode in that way in a movie. So I was trying to think of like what movie, but I don't think it happens in Anaconda. Well, I'll tell you what, it can't happen enough. And I couldn't think any other snake movies. Doesn't John Voight come back out of the Anaconda? Uh, He gets like weirdly eaten. I think they just kill the Anaconda with an axe. I feel like it's kind of lame uh. how they, by my memory, but I haven't seen that movie in a long time. I remember the first time I saw Anaconda was at a sleepover at a friend's house. It was like a birthday party sleepover and Owen Wilson was in it. And I knew who Owen Wilson was from like Zoolander and Shanghai Noon. And I assumed he was just always like an A-list actor. And I confidently declared that he would survive. I'm like, oh, he's going to live to the end. And he's, I think, <laughs> the second guy to die in that movie. And I stopped watching and uh, there was like clearly something was happening in the movie. And, and I, I said, oh, what's going on? And then somebody just yelled back to me. That guy you said wouldn't die is getting killed. I felt so he, dumb. He's had some pretty good deaths. What was it? The what was that movie? The Haunting? Where like the fireplace oh, knocks his yeah. head off. He gets the captain. He went through a real run of deaths too, like Armageddon as well. I feel like all those movies kind of came out back to back to back. I feel like you have to put in the deaths until you become so beloved that you don't die in movies anymore. Unless you're Sean Bean. Like yeah, I was exception. about to say, yeah. nobody's told Sean B. Unless you're just so good at it, it becomes a hallmark of, of your performance. <laughs> Maybe Anaconda could be a next, one of our next watches. Oh, and dude. we still need to do MVP 2. I've been we waiting forever. MVP. For Let's MVP do that 2. soon. I, doesn't it seem like snakes should have an Achilles heel? They don't really. <laughs> yeah. It well, seems yeah, they it's not fair. to have a heel. Well, yeah, but like, you know, vampires have garlic or crosses and like werewolves have silver bullets or uh, I mean, slugs have salt. <laughs> Right? Like, there should creatures. be a thing. You could just like, stamp on their head. <laughs> yeah, mean? but, like, you, you should be able to, like, throw milk at a snake and it shrivels up. <laughs> no, I, I agree with Jeff. I don't feel like I know what to do in a snake attack. Yeah. Like, I a hippo feel like, and you shove it down its throat. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, don't you hit, you hit sharks in the nose, right? Like, that's the shark yeah. thing. Like, I feel or like the that's gills. their Achilles. Oh, I didn't even know the gills. I think the you snake. could also turn a shark upside down. I feel like unless you're like James Brown and you can split your way while like getting halfway and then do the split, like I don't know what the move would be. Yeah. Is it an eye poke? What is it? There That's has a good to be something. It's a, what, what is it? What's, yeah. Like you stick your make finger sure you in its snake butthole or it paralyzes it maybe? <laughs> if you're in a snake area, make sure you always have an umbrella with you. Just be ready. <laughs> Turn it upside down and rub its belly like a crocodile or go to sleep. <laughs> do six barrel rolls. On the inside. They all tie it in a knot. <laughs> <laughs> so harsh. <laughs> it's just, it's like, I come after just... me now, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> just imagining. But don't like being. Badump, badump. I'm imagining being half eaten by a snake and then just rolling down a large hill while it's trying to eat you. And you both just falling down a mountainside. <laughs> oh. God damn. Hey, we uh, should we talk about 
We, we, that was a decapitation event this weekend. I can't believe we haven't brought it up yet. <laughs> what? Owen Wilson? What do you mean? No, we all hung out. Oh man, Henry's going at it. Uh, <laughs> he really is. <laughs> yeah, he is. We, uh, he woke up. Uh, and he found the, he found the aloe that I hid. Uh, we went, we hung out this weekend and we went swimming together. Uh, two weekends in a row with Eric, not a water really? guy. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah, went, went swimming again. And, Eric is uh, so a water guy, by the way. He's so a water guy. He invited everybody to water. Yeah, but I was... Okay, here's the thing. I was talking to my small wife about this. I <laughs> was saying that I was on the boat most of the time, sometimes in the water, sometimes on the big lily pad. Jeff was in the water almost 100% of the time we were allowed to be in the water. Oh it my was, God, yes. It was crazy. I felt like I saw you sometimes, and it's only because I had to go to where you were, which was in the water. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that that was the that case. There was a moment where you were on the lily pad, but then there were like 12 dudes around it. And it was like talking to you like you were on a big plate. <laughs> <laughs> it was. That was really funny. You were, you were the bell of the ball. It really was like having a weird harem. I didn't, I don't, yeah. I don't think I liked it much, but it was yeah. good enough. Uh, but we did. We we hung out on Lake Travis. Er, Eric's small wife uh, rented a like a party boat, like a two decker party boat for Eric's. Uh, I guess for your birthday because we got you birthday presents. And uh, and then we just spent like half a day <laughs> swimming. And there was a lily pad. And we brought floaties. And we played. We went diving. And we played games. And we threw balls. And we had all kinds of fun. Oh, that's awesome. But the guy, the captain. And I say captain lightly because he was like nineteen. Uh, <laughs> The captain, as he was driving us out there, he was like, y'all want to go to Devil's Cove? That's where everybody usually goes, or we could go uh, over here, a little closer. And we were like, we don't give a fuck. Let's go closer. And is it empty? And he's like, yeah, there's nobody here. So uh, we went there because it was empty. And, and then like we were there for like maybe two hours swimming and having fun. And then he gets a radio call on the boat. And then he goes, you guys never believe this, but uh, over there, Devil's Cove, somebody just got their arm ripped off. Oh, they Jesus had to medevac him out. Christ. Yeah. What? And uh, I feel like we never found out anything else. Like, we didn't find out why that Emily came spent off. the rest of the weekend looking to figure it out and couldn't find anything online about it anywhere. That, that information has to be delivered with more information. Has, mm. to, has to contain more info. Otherwise, think, why are you telling people? I have a, well, I have a theory on this. Do you think yeah. that actually happened, or do you think that's that guy's move? Spice up the trip a little bit. Inject so, himself into the party. I do think it happened, because I think we did see a medevac helicopter okay. going from the area. Got it. However, I will agree that it needs to be given with more information, because then when we were talking about it a little bit later, the <laughs> captain, with his hat over his eyes and his feet kicked up, I was going... Hey, Blaine, did you hear about that guy's arm who got chopped off? We don't know what happened to it. And I looked at the captain. He tilted his hat back and just sort of shrugged at me and then put it back down and just went back to sleep. <laughs> How far away is the place that you could have went where it happened to where you were then? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Maybe. Yeah, Maybe. that's fucking crazy. That'd be like if you said the neighbors were killed by Freddy Krueger or like Jason or something. Like, I'd be so paranoid that whatever ripped that it's guy's like, it's arm okay, off. It's okay, it was three blocks away. You're fine. Yeah, it's what? <laughs> you mean the, the thing that just ripped somebody's arm off is still around? across the main road. Left? You're okay. Yeah, like, uh. what are you talking about? Yeah, I would love to know. Like we were talking about with Meg, and she she uh, uh, I guess spent a lot of time on lakes when she was younger, and she was saying it happens all the time. Like uh, that like, doesn't I guess, ma that, that doesn't like make me feel any will, better. Like <laughs> propeller will pop a hand off pretty quick. Oh. But I guess also like I guess also people get like their arms caught in ropes, and then they get pulled, and it just like like pops oh it off. Jesus, yeah. If you, if you get your arm like if if a rope loops around your arm and then suddenly goes very taut, it can ping a limb a limb off. I guess. Yeah. Oh wow. I. Hmm. It's one of those things you hear about. It's like, wow, I wonder what they were doing. Like, I wonder what crazy thing they were doing. I'm sure he was just like a guy with two arms just going on a party boat, just like us. I'm then, sure he was just hanging on the beach and a gust of wind came by. <laughs> <laughs> Blew his hand off. Blew his hand off. That's anyway, crazy. That was fucking wild. And, but it was a great time uh, for everybody but that guy that day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, and his, probably his, the people he was with. So I hope he's okay wherever he is. I hope they were able to reattach it. Uh <laughs> <laughs> that's always um, the hope uh if if you'll indulge me i do have a, another small story related to a personal tragedy please i'd love so, to hear uh, that's a weird 
way to respond to that tragedy statement. Sorry. Go ahead. So this is no, this is, I would love to entertain you with it. Uh, so on Friday, uh, I had like a thing fall through and I had a free window on Friday afternoon and Emily was off and she looked at me and she was like, seems like a great day to go jet skiing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck, it would be a great day to go jet skiing. <laughs> and we haven't been jet skiing, you know, this year. So it's probably been, I don't know, September of last year that I was the last time I went. And, you know, I don't know if you guys remember this, but there was a point in time where we were a jet ski podcast mm -hmm. and we sold jet ski <laughs> merchandise because yeah. of how into jet skis one of us was. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I was very excited. I was like, holy shit. It just like, I don't know why it didn't dawn on me that I can still jet ski. It was just like, uh, so we like raced to the jet ski place. And, uh, and uh, by the way, uh, jet skiing. It did not get in, did not get lamer, did not get any less fun. If anything, mm -hmm. it's more fun than I remembered. Oh my fucking God, am I a jet ski guy again? <laughs> I cannot tell you how much fucking fun a jet ski is. It is, uh, well, I mean, Gavin, you know, you were on it once. Imagine how much fun you had. I had that much fun Friday, but, but more because but jet again. skis just keep getting better. And again, and so anyway, we hop on uh, Lake Austin, not Lake Travis, where the guy got his arm lopped off, but Lake Austin, which is much smaller. And it takes about takes about two hours to go from one end of Lake Austin, like from one dam to the other dam and back. So you can basically do like a full loop, uh, if, especially if you go about 50, 52. Uh, More of a river for, than a lake, in my for opinion. A good, yeah, for a good period of it. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And so uh, the way we typically do it is like I'll ride the first hour. We'll, we'll take one. I'll drive the first hour. She'll sit on the back. We'll flip and then she'll do the way back or whatever. I should also... Uh, so, just so I can be fair, uh, I should mention this too. My girlfriend has has informed me that she likes swans a normal amount, a regular amount. She likes swans no more or less than any of you guys like swans. She doesn't have a thing for swans. She's not way into swans. I told this story this weekend. I was practicing. I told it to some other friends of ours, and uh, apparently I... I lean too heavy on Emily's <laughs> uh, sudden love of swans. Uh, so I'm just, I, on the, for the record, she likes swans like, like a C, I guess. Like whatever the average swan okay. amount is. Despite the, fact, despite the fact, despite the fact that we just went to London and we were there for a week and there were three things she got excited about. She got excited about Phantom of the Opera. Uh, she got excited about Hot Pot. And she got excited about swans. And uh, only one of those things is now her her lock screen on her iPhone and, I, and I'm not going to tell you which one it is, but it's not Phantom of the Opera and it's not a plate of hot pot or a bowl of hot pot. Uh, but she just likes swans an average amount. However, when we, she was driving and I was on the back about maybe an hour and a half into this, she sees a swan and did the jet ski equivalent at 40 miles an hour of slamming on the brakes and a jet ski doesn't go. <laughs> but if it did, it would have done it for a long time. Sees the swan, slams on the brakes, goes, holy shit, look at that swan that I just have a regular <laughs> amount of, uh, uh, of affection for. And I'm like, yeah, totally. It's a beautiful swan. And at this point, we're like, I'm going to say 75, 75 feet away from the swan. I think that's safe. It's a pretty good distance. But like, you know, I can see the swan. It's a big swan. And, uh, and she's like, wow, that thing is really pretty. And I'm like, yeah, it is pretty. And I'm enjoying the majesty of the swan, as is she, because I also like swans an average amount. I don't have it on my lock screen or anything, but I do enjoy swans. And so we're looking at it, and it's just kind of like swanning around to the left a little bit, and then it swans over to the right a little bit, and it like dips its little swan beak. Not little at all. It's giant. It's swan beak in the water and like, like kind of comes up like... Uh, uh, I don't know, like what's her face in Fast Times at Ridgemont High when she comes out of the water, and like, <laughs> Phoebe Cates, and yeah. there's like there's droplets going everywhere, and it's just like this beautiful swan, and she's really taking in the majesty of the swan, and then it kind of turns around and it sees, it registers that we exist, and you know we're in front of the swan and to the left, about seventy five feet. I'm fully turned around because I'm on the back of this thing. Emily's like you know between me and the front of the thing, and so she's kind of got to look over her shoulder. So she's like trying to steal glances of the swan and enjoy its majesty. And when it kind of turns around, <laughs> it like, it lifts up a little bit, and it, take, and it like opens up its swan arms, and it like all these feathers come out. And Emily's like, oh my God, that's beautiful. It's showing us its feathers. Which I agree, it was beautiful, but something about it seemed aggressive to me. And, uh, and, and I got, I don't know, something felt off. 
And then, so she's kind of like still looking over and, you know, and the thing is drifting. So she's like looking around. We're also in the middle of Lake Austin. There's boats everywhere. So as a responsible uh, jet ski driver who just slammed on the jet ski brakes in the middle of the water, she's like looking around, making sure nobody's going to clip us or we're going to hit anybody or, any, you know, we're not in anybody's way. And the, the swan, it made eye contact with me. <laughs> and, and you know that scene in uh, the episode of Always Sunny where Mac and Charlie are, are both at the Italian restaurant, uh, Giordino's, both on the other ends, <laughs> yeah. and they make eye contact and they can't stop looking at each other? <laughs> it keeps like, zooming in across yeah, the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Like the swan and I had that moment and it was unsettling for me, right? And I was kind of transfixed almost, almost, you know how like Dracula in the, maybe not new Dracula, but like the old Dracula, he would like look at a woman and she would become like transfixed and that's how he would, and then he would like, you know, lay her down in his bed and then he would bite her neck. I felt a little bit like the, the swan was transfixing me. Like it was just, it was just weird, right? And then, this isn't going to sound real, um, <laughs> but it is. I've been waiting for the swan to attack you. The swan cracked its neck. Like, you know what? how, like, when you're about to get into a fight with somebody and you'll, like, crack your neck to the right and then to the left, <laughs> like, roll your shoulders? It was, like, <laughs> intimidating. This one did that. What? And then, I, all I can say, it was a lot of neck. All I can say is it was, like, I realized that the swan was angry. Right. And, I, and I've kind of lost my voice because I, I'm still transfixed by Dracula swan. Right. And, uh, and I go, em Emily, go, go. I think we should go. I think I think we should go. And she's like, huh? You know, and looking around. And and then you know that scene in Terminator 2 where uh, where Robert Patrick pulls them over. He's a cop and they realize he's a Terminator and they're driving away and he starts running after them with his mm -hmm. blade arms. And it's incredibly scary because he's going yeah. really fast. Yeah. His head's, head's like quite still. Yeah. And it's yeah, the head's still and it's super like focused and intent. Uh, the swan raised up and then it charged at me like Robert Patrick <laughs> with it's like half flying, half running on the water with its swan arms in front of it, just like the Terminator. <laughs> oh, and so I scream, oh my God, go, we've got to go. You, I didn't say go, go now or at all, at any point. I wasn't that, I wasn't that clever. I was just like, Jesus Christ, we've got to go. And she goes, what? And then she kind of turns around and sees it. I look at her to be like, what the fuck? And then I see her eyes register. I turn back around. It has covered the span of 75 feet in less than two seconds. When I turn around, she starts to go. When I turn around to my right, I just see a swan arm coming at me. So I turn back to my left in time to see the swan cobra strike me in the back, right above my butt and to the left of my spine. All I can see is feathers and a giant swan face attack me. And I get hit and like impact and it like pushes me forward. And then Emily guns it and we go probably 200 feet. And then she stops and she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm like, oh. I think so. The swan bit me. The swan struck me. And I'm looking and she's like, are you serious? And we're like checking to make sure all of our limbs and stuff are there. And we turn around and the swan's still coming at us. It's still, like it's looking at us and it's like still coming like the Terminator. So we gun it and we go even further and, uh, and we just eventually just go. It's like we go under the 360 bridge. We're like miles away from the swan. This point we pull in and I'm just fucking shook, right? And we turn the thing, and the guy's like, how was it? And, and Emily goes, we got attacked by a swan. And he goes, oh, swan got you, huh? Yeah, that's a mean son of a bitch. And I go, you know about the swan? And he goes, everybody knows about the swan. And so I guess everybody knew about the swan but us. Uh, I had a bruise where it hit me in the slow of my back. I think it's probably gone by now. Uh, oh. and, and all I could think about for the rest of the day was if that if, if that swan had knocked me off the jet ski, I'm dead. Like, there's no would have, way. It would still be on top of you now. There's no way I could fight a swan in its fucking home turf. I'd be floating around on my life vest, and it'd just be popping me in the head, and I couldn't turn oh around fast enough. I would fuck a swan up on land, but I was so far away from land, I would never have made it. It would have picked my eyes out. I was, like, seconds away from dying. I was just imagining that scene in Home Alone 2. Where Marv gets caked in all the bird seed, and all the pigeons come in. Like, <laughs> like that's what it would have been like if you fell off. <laughs> so anyway, oh. uh, not dude, quite a swan as swan bit your back. Swan bit me, dude. Not quite as dramatic as the, the <laughs> whale shark story, 
but just it was terrifying. <laughs> From Phoebe Cates to Robert Patrick. <laughs> oh my god! Easily. Uh, are are you easily. offended that it's still her lock screen? Like whatever you see, that swan <laughs> is. It, does it bring back memories? No, your no. nemesis is now no, a swan. No. No, 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 I'm okay with it. I, I've been assured that Emily likes swans a regular <laughs> amount and uh, totally appropriate. So I'm, I'm not going to question that anymore. Uh, oh. I'm just, I'm just picturing Robert Patrick now with honks. Someone is, <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, that swan went 100 miles an hour in 0.1 second. It was like... It closed that gap of 75 feet in less than three <laughs> seconds, more like two seconds. Like the time for me to like look yeah. back, back, it was on me. It was like it teleported. <laughs> Did you think at any point you were going to have to kill a swan? I was, no. I, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know that I could have. Like it was huge. It had to weigh 300 pounds, right? It was fucking massive. And, and, I, and I'm at a severe disadvantage in the water. Yeah. Like, I, I just don't, I don't even know, dude. <laughs> that's I, where I swans did, are from. Yeah, that's where swans are from. Now, <laughs> how comparable was it to when Larry David got attacked by a swan in Curb? Is the he? only thing I'm trying. Yeah, that there's like the one black of, swan. Yeah, the black swan. There's an episode where they kill the, the guy that oh, owns the golf course the golf has course. the swan <laughs> and he, they murder the swan. I was wondering as a visual comparison, because I feel like it's kind of what you're describing is like that, but on land. It's immediately what I thought of when you're talking about swans and yeah. the possibility of you getting into a swan fight. Is oh, I, I remember hearing in England that the queen owns all the swans. I'm not sure if that's a load of shite or not, but I'm pretty sure you can't kill them if they go for you. But I think here, I don't think the queen's reach. I don't think she has <laughs> jurisdiction over the American swans. So I think, I think you're good to murder away. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Eric asked if I'm sure the swan weighed 300 pounds, so I looked up how much the swan weighs. It had to weigh at least 30 pounds. At least 30 pounds. <laughs> Swans are like 30 pounds max. It was massive. <laughs> like 300? What it was the a, fuck? It was a... When there's a swan on you in the water, dude, you're not a water guy. You're a water adjacent guy. It would be way worse for you. <laughs> a swan that's like 10 times denser than us. A swan, a swan seemed like a grizzly bear when it was on my back biting me. <laughs> I really want you to try to get like a spit sample from the swan to submit to 23 me to determine where it came from. <laughs> See if you legally are allowed to go fight that swan. If it's under the queen's protection or not. Yeah, I wonder if they migrate. <laughs> does, does their uh. Jurisdiction wear off. <laughs> oh. So anyway, uh, drove from there straight to the jet ski store to buy a jet ski. You bought one? No. You Guess what the jet ski store didn't have? A single jet ski. <laughs> they had a picture of a jet ski. I left right. very dejected. You'll get a fridge before you get a jet ski. So Yeah, dude. A fridge for my how, fucking bike. That's how much fun jet skiing is in your mind that you went out, you got attacked by a large bird, and your instinct was to buy the thing that, that would let you do that more? 100%. That was your response? Hundred percent. Fantastic. Yes. I love it. it that that's why I will steer clear of the swan oh my going God. forward. I will definitely stay the fuck away from swans. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest. I would have stayed away from the swan had I been driving. Uh, it wasn't my, <laughs> my decision. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I think we'll cut a wide swath around the swans. The rest of it, un unbelievable fun. Oh, my God. I want a jet ski. It's so great that the swan has a rep. Like fucking Quint from Jaws is going to be on a dock <laughs> talking about the swan that's in the water. You can't I catch mean, it. Uh, apparently it's a known evil, which means it's always around. <laughs> so anybody wants to go see the swan, I'll take y'all sometime. We'll just rent a jet ski and I'll, I know exactly where it is. Coming this summer, honks. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the swan's honk? That's geese, isn't it? The swan's honk? I don't think they do. I think they uh, all... I'm sure it has its it own could. terrible oh, sound. That, Nick says they both I'm honk. Just, <laughs> I'm just... Uh, like the scene from, so we're referencing a lot of movies today, but the scene from Psycho with that, uh, 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 like just honk noises honk, instead. Honk, honk. <laughs> Somebody should just cut, cut swans and honking into all horror movie. Oh, that'd be great. I don't feel like we've gotten a, a swan horror movie that I'm aware of. We've gone snakes. Uh, we've gone birds, <laughs> not swans. Was a swan in the birds? I haven't no, seen the I birds in a so. while. I, I don't, don't think, think there so. was. 
I saw that groundhog. Like yeah. Groundhog. <laughs> This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life can be overwhelming and many people are burnt out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment, fatigue, and more. I experience a lot of those things with burnout, as I've talked about before. It's draining in so many ways. It just is a terrible thing to be going through. We associate burnout with work, but that's not the only cause. Any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burned out. BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. Uh, therapy has been a super beneficial thing to me. Um, it, just being able to talk with somebody and sort through your issues it makes such a big impact in my day-to-day -day and creating systems and just learning the limits of, of where I will hit with burnout, knowing when I need to step away, which is something I struggle with. Uh, if you're somebody who's considered therapy, Based on my experience, I would highly recommend it. It has made a tremendous impact in my life. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a the therapist in under 48 hours. F face listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com face. That's BetterHelp.com face. Ever heard of data brokers? They're in the middlemen collecting and selling all those digital footprints you leave online. They can stitch together detailed profiles which include your browsing history, online searches, and location data. They then sell your profile off to a company who delivers you a targeted ad. No biggie, right? Well, you might be surprised to learn that these same data brokers are also selling your information to the Department of Homeland Security and the IRS. I, for one, don't want the tax man showing up at my door because of some search I did on my phone. So to mask my digital footprints, I protect myself with ExpressVPN. One of the easiest ways for brokers to aggregate data and tie it back to you is through your device's unique IP address, which also reveals information about your location. When you're connected to ExpressVPN, your IP address is hidden. That makes it much more difficult for data brokers to identify who you are. ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of network traffic to keep your data safe from hackers on public Wi-Fi. That's why I have the ExpressVPN app downloaded on all my devices, phone, computer, and even my home Wi-Fi router. All I do is tap one button to turn it on, and I'm protected. It's that easy. So make sure your online activity and data is protected with the best VPN money can buy. Visit expressvpn.com face right now and get three extra months free through my special link. That's expressvpn.com face expressvpn.com slash face to learn more. The time for spring cleaning is upon us. Do more than just dust your cabinets and organize your closet. Spring clean your butthole with Hello Tushy Bidets. After wiping with dry, scratchy toilet paper all winter long, our bums could use a serious refresh. Put your cleanest booty forward and start washing with Hello Tushy. Uh, Hello Tushy makes a fantastic product. It is so easy to install. It has changed my bathroom. It's fantastic. And so you should stop spreading your business around your butthole with toilet paper and start washing with Hello Tushy Bidets. The Hello Tushy Bidet attachment washes your bum in the fresh water for a way better clean than toilet paper. Simply spray and pat dry, attaches to your existing toilet, no electrician or plumber needed, installs in less than 8 minutes, cuts down your TP use by 80%, saving money and paper waste. Hello Tushy has cleaned over 1 million happy bumps. Join them and take care of your business the cleaner way. I want all of our listeners to have clean bumps. Visit hellotushy.com slash face to get 10% off plus free shipping right now. Tag us and at hellotushy on social media so we can celebrate your clean butt with you. That's hellotushy.com slash face for 10% off. <laughs> that's incredible. Did you take a photo of the bruise? No, I didn't think to. See, oh, that's where you and I are. If I got fucking bit by a swan, I'm putting that on my wall. I want a <laughs> I photo mean, of that. I know. Race. I had like another 30 minutes on the jet ski, and then we had the whole conversation with the guy, and then before you knew it, and then we ate lunch, and before I knew it, it was, yeah. I'd forgot. Do you think you're going to get back out there and try and take it out? <laughs> I don't want anything to do with it. I learned, I, I learned Emily's lesson. Yeah. <laughs> I'm staying away from swans. She was fine, that... by the way. Swan didn't bite her. I provided a meat shield for her, <laughs> for her normal swan viewing. That
That would, that's funny because if you were on the shore watching that happen, you would be rolling around on the floor laughing at the poor dude getting bit by Oh my <laughs> god, are you kidding? That'd be the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Oh, I'm I just mean, hoping so much on the on the Austin subreddit. Someone just posts the security footage <laughs> and then <die. laughs> <laughs> just I would love to show the security him. footage like that. Something like I'm on a TikTok. I never know. I never knew it was recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I want to oh, see God. that swan run of 40 based on what you said. Like, we Dude. need to get the clocks out. We need to time it. I want to know where it What's ranks. A, oh, I'm going to Google swan's max speed. It was so, so fast. That's a great Andrew, question. Last week, last week, you said you're not a big, you're not a jet ski guy. Like, you wouldn't get on a jet yeah, ski. Yeah, yeah, na not naturally. And now maybe even, one. maybe even more so now. Uh, I think so. Uh, you know hour. what? This is the problem with what Jeff just said. If I was invited to ride on the jet ski, I'd never want to be on it out of the possibility I could watch him getting attacked by, by a swan, <laughs> which is infinitely better. I don't care how much fun jet skis are. I, you could not convince me that it would be more enjoyable than watching you get attacked by a swan. But you'd be it's incredible. incredible. You'd get a great view from the other jet ski. No, I, I, I don't. I don't know. I Maybe. watched him jump over a dead deer once. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. A lot happens on the water, man. <laughs> <laughs> what happens as uh. he stays at sea and nobody thinks that that's getting attacked by a swan like that's never in the list of possible things that could cover i like the guy that's definitely not a jet ski guy is the same guy that wanted us to joust on jet skis <laughs> i i was co-opting that idea wasn't i i thought jeff wanted to do a cool high five I'll do it. and then I'll it do like it. evolved Let's do it. Because that's, that's still in the works. We're talking about like what the, the tricks, tricks would right? be. And then I think because you had an issue about it being unsafe. And so I suggested two, two just like poles with a foam hand on the end of each. And then you, you ride by, you do the high five with the joust. I also watch it as a sport, but <laughs> that's amazing. I, would, I think I would be radically changed by that experience, Jeff. I think it would be a marker in my life. Like when I, if I was playing like a trivia game and the question was, did this movie, like what was this movie that came out 2022 starring Brad Pitt? I would then associate, was that pre-Swan Bite or post-Swan Bite? <laughs> like it would be a marker Dude. for the rest of my life of like how I could define time. Dude, I, I will admit I was a little like legitimately shook for maybe <laughs> yeah. 45 minutes. But by the time I was eating at Hula Hut <laughs> with Emily and <laughs> laughing about it, I was so fucking excited for today, for this moment. I was like, I cannot <laughs> wait. I cannot wait to tell this fucking story. When, when regulation animation comes out, it's going to be exclusively about you on the water. <laughs> like every story. <laughs> uh, like it's some sort of oh, this is going to be so good animated. Dude, I didn't realize I was as much how much of a water guy I was until Eric brought it up. But it's true. I, I didn't I didn't go in the water for like a decade. But now I guess I'm making up for lost time. It is yeah. so much fucking fun. Because you were a surfer before, right? Like I used you to have a I history. surfed. Yeah. yeah, I used to like, surf. You have a history in my twenties. Yeah, I guess that's true. Guy. Yeah, yeah. I fucking love. Ugh, I went to now. I I go to Barton Springs every weekend right now. I go to Deep Eddy Pool every weekend. I need a pool. So surfing's one of those things to me that d it doesn't look like it should work. Like, I don't understand anything about the physics of it. <laughs> yeah. It's very intimidating to look at, to, to be like in my mid thirties and have never surfed. And I just watch people surf all the time. And I'm like, hey, I'm just too late now. Can't get into surfing now. You think so? You think you've passed your, your moment? Oh yeah, I think so. Why? What happened? What was the thing that changed? For I just you? don't believe in it, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Eric, Eric brings up a good, Eric brings up a good point. Uh, he found out over the I think yesterday we were recording that other podcast I do, and uh, we found out that Gus, our, our mutual friend uh, from the day job, Gus knows how to surf. And if you know Gus, you know he's like the least coordinated human on earth. So if Gus could surf at all ever, <laughs> you could surf at not. You could learn how to surf at ninety eight. You'll be fine. Gus could surf, he could fly, he could do weddings, he could do everything. <laughs> He's a renaissance man. <laughs> oh, man. You know what I found out this weekend? Not what? everybody knows how to dive. I, what do you mean? I, well, you have to learn how to dive. Don't you? Otherwise you... But you have to learn how to swim. Like, uh, like, don't you learn how to dive as a part of learning how to swim? It's like day three or something. No, I feel, I feel like you jump in first. We were on the top so of this, two, this double-decker boat. 
and everyone's jumping in and just like going feet first and cannonball and all this stuff. Jeff like jumps in the air, looks like he touches his toes, jackknifes in, no splash, whoof, right up back to the top and everything. And it's everyone standing on the upper deck going, whoa, that was awesome. That's cool. And then Jeff's going, everyone knows how to dive. What do you mean? <laughs> everyone knows how to dive. And nobody I'm, knows how to dive. What are you talking about? Blew my mind. Blew my fucking mind. I have a like, very important. Was this before or after the swan bite? Uh, this was after. This was Sunday. Swan bite. So was I, is it possible that post swan bite, you're like 20% more graceful than you were before? Do you think you would have achieved <laughs> swan <laughs> thrust off? <laughs> the, 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 the swan. I was it a swan <laughs> dive? Were you tapping into your new your new connection that you've formed? I'm like I'm like the swan version of a werewolf now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, what was even funnier is uh, I, I I really I I'm, I'm honestly I just I remember I learned how to swim at the YMCA when I was like eight, and I just remember that was a part of it. Uh, so I just assumed spelt. everybody everybody else learned how to swim in Oregon in the '80s in the same way I did. Uh, but I will say, uh, Emily posted like a video of the day of like, of us, everybody jumping and diving and stuff. And my mom texted me out of the blue and said, when did you learn how to dive? (laughs) 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 And I was like, are you fucking serious? So I guess I was just fucking super ignorant. I had no, I I apologize to to all the non-divers. I really didn't know. You dove from the top of the boat through an inner tube. Yeah. And the the sound was like, yeah, it was like. (laughs) Perfect. It was super impressive. Oh, thank you. I tried later on and I hit my forehead on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gavin fucking dive bombed it. Because <laughs> anyone can dive if you classify diving as jumping and then going upside down. But you don't have all the grace. <laughs> you haven't been bitten by a swan yet. It's not your fault. <laughs> it's true. Gavin, we can, we can, here's how we can, here's how we can make bitten by a large boulder. I need you to, uh, uh follow me on Friday. We're going to go on down to the lake. We're going to get you bit by a swan. <laughs> by Sunday, you're going to be Greg Luganus. Could, in all seriousness, you need to track that swan down again. We need a photo of that I swan. I have no fear that I could, or no, like I, I, I have a hundred percent certainty I could get back to that swan and it'll be there. Dude, oh, if, I'm if so excited. I, I want to sit on the back of your jet ski facing the other way with a slow mo <laughs> camera, and it'll be the most epic footage ever of the filmed. Swan coming at us? Is, yeah. Oh, please. 100%. We got it. That'd be so that. good. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's do that very soon. We'll okay. t- you, do you have a little, uh, like, you don't want to take the, I'm sure you don't want to take your Phantom out on a jet ski, but do you have, like, a smaller <laughs> handheld? Uh, I mean, the smallest one is the one I filmed your bike stunt on. Oh, okay. I mean, if you want to take it to the middle of Lake Austin, we can do that. Yeah, Eric, I need a large insurance policy (laughs) from the credit card. Sure, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) We'll we'll, we'll wrap it in plastic. Yeah, there you go. Insurance. I guarantee you that swan will be there, and I guarantee you I can get it. All I have to do to get the swan (laughs) to come after us is make a look at it. (laughs) (sighs) Oh. I'm oh. so excited for this. I have a this McDonald's bag on my head. <laughs> <laughs> we could. <laughs> and they're like, how did that guy get his arm cut off again? Swan fight. <laughs> swan fight. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I don't think a butterfly net would work with a swan. I need, I need something bigger. I think that's all I ever heard about swans as a kid. It's like, oh, don't mess with a swan; they'll break your arm. I just don't really understand <laughs> how. What? Specifically, like, that? that's their fin- no. I didn't know that they had a finishing move. Like they fucking knew jujitsu. <laughs> you said that like they throw you into arm bars, and that's they a common fact. You what are you talking away. about? Yeah, it's just I heard it a lot, and all everyone swans said it. No Krav Maga. It's like one of those things that like all kids hear about, and then they just move that information onto the next person. Like, oh yeah, yeah, a swan will break your arm. Has anyone seen a swan break anyone's arm? If it's thirty pounds, do swan? I'll look that up. Do, do swans, do swans break arms? Break arms? Do swans break Dude, it's 60 arms. miles an hour, it might. Do swans break... If you approach a swan nest on the river... Holy fuck, imagine <laughs> accidentally going into the swan nest. That's oh. terrifying. <laughs> I, a comment leave is, if you're, if you're a regulation listener about to turn, or if you're a regulation comment leaver... Oh wait, a normal comment... What? 
Uh, let me know if you've Just had a comment leaver. Let me know if you've seen a swan break anyone's arm. Or if you've had, has has a swan ever attacked you? Did it break your arm? Did yeah. it sprain your ankle? Anything? Let us know. They might get aggressive and hiss and flap their wings, but the danger is overrated, and it's a myth that they will break your leg or arm with their wings. They are oh, not that strong, shit. and it's mostly show and bluster. Yeah, Jeff um, got somebody, blasted. somebody tell that to the somebody tell that to the fucking terror of Lake Austin. <laughs> I think we should go out there, find the swan, and not come home until F until Jeff's arm is broken off. <laughs> oh man! I you like became arm. the guy. It goes full circle. There's somebody else on the water that gets told about some weird arm break that was removed, and you have no context for. You could be the guy. That could be you, dude. Speaking of fucking dumb guys, <laughs> there was a story, <laughs> and this lake. There was a story that happened uh, like maybe four or five months ago. A Eric and Nick and Gavin may have heard this, although I doubt Gavin has because he doesn't hear much. But uh, this dude, uh, <laughs> I just I don't think you're as like plugged into like local America, like like Austin shit. Maybe oh, you know? it doesn't like, concern me. You're more international, exactly. See, so uh, <laughs> we have this thing called the 360 Bridge. It's like it looks like a I don't know, like a mini Golden Gate Bridge. Kind of, well, not really. It's like a it's a half circle. Uh, but it's like our version of a nice bridge. It goes right over Lake Austin. Uh, it's actually where sometimes we ju we go in with the jet skis, depending on where they're putting in that day. Uh, uh, and it is at the very top, uh, from the very very top of the like of the of the circular part of the bridge. I guess like the aesthetic part of the bridge. Uh, it is eight feet shorter than the Golden Gate Bridge, and so it's incredibly dangerous to jump off of. Because as you know, the Golden Gate Bridge, you'll die if you jump off of it. And uh, apparently that eight feet makes a big difference. Some fucking like 22-year-old dude or some young dude in Austin climbed up there as a prank and filmed it. I think it was even on Instagram. Yeah, there's the bridge in the photos. Oh, uh, yeah. He climbed up to the top of that and uh, filmed himself jumping off. And he didn't die. He almost died. I think that eight feet saved his life, they were saying. But he did like get a concussion and crack his head open and he needed, I think, oh, some Jesus. kind of fucking brain surgery and stuff. Like it was a whole thing. And they were interviewing him in uh, oh yeah, see Nick heard about this. They were interviewing him uh for like the statesman or whatever afterward, and they asked him in the hospital, they're like, What do you have any messages to anybody else that may try something like this? <laughs> and he goes, Keep following your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess he had a lot of a t time for a lot of them while his head was cracked open. Yeah, no kidding. It's fantastic. Uh, keep following your dreams. I laugh about that every time I see that bridge now. Uh, I think Eric posted his quote. Oh, I did not mean to go and jump off a bridge. I have a big fucking ego and I know I'm capable of. Hopefully there's been motivation, not by me jumping off of a bridge to show off and say to the same, but you find something within you that motivates you, go chase after your own dreams. <laughs> like he's a fucking hero. Like he's inspired a yeah, nation. He's, he's inspired a nation by almost dying. There he is. <laughs> oh my god! In a neck brace. Oh. Um. By the way, the the fucking uh swan is like the distance from the bridge to the end of the photo. That much further right is where the swan is. <laughs> it's pretty okay. close. It's pretty close to that location in that. Uh, that's exciting. I cannot wait for the swan update. Yeah. <laughs> we have enough locations now for a face tour book or like a guidebook <laughs> <laughs> go to the swan you can walk through the snake bushes and find baseballs the fun, like face guide to austin yeah <laughs> it's like those not for tourists guides like yeah. we'll show you the real austin here's where <laughs> here's where you get pushed off your bike by the gentle ghost <laughs> here's where you can do a sweet bike trick <laughs> <laughs> and here's where bean holes don't work <laughs> <laughs> oh christ oh. <laughs> so we oh, we had a man. conversation about how we've talked about the anal passage shirt so much we need to put it to bed we need yeah to, we like, agreed just, <laughs> before so you got many here, <laughs> so many talk. consecutive episodes i did i got my anal passage shirt though and i had a realization when i was looking at it something pieced together in my mind and i can't unsee it now and I'm hoping it will do the same for you. Have you noticed the giant dick on the anal passage shirt? No. Let me post it. Post picture. I'm gonna, I see. can't believe I'm about to Google anal passage. Oh, that's not. <laughs> yeah, that's not. Okay, so it. here's the here's the logo. Do you see <laughs> oh. the dick yet? 
Oh, at the top, the cock and at balls. At the top. Yeah, it's a dick with cock and balls. That's is all that I on, see now. Is that, that on the is, original? Like Eric said, that was the Universal logo. I believe so. Just, to, oh, you know, yeah. in, case, in case you missed it, I did a nice little circle for you there. Really focus in. Dick and balls. Every time I see that now, that's all I see. Dick and balls. Oh, it's, yeah. <laughs> Universal Studios Hollywood has the dick and balls. Oh, my God. The dick and balls. That's amazing. By the way, don't Google uh, anal passage. <laughs> don't Google image search anal passage face. <laughs> or yeah. anal passage dick and balls is probably not it, as good. It does not, <laughs> does not get, get you where you want to go. I just, I didn't, I'm glad you, you both saw it because I didn't know because I had the same thing with the Slack <laughs> when Slack changed its logo and I, I didn't feel, I, I feel like I didn't really hear many other people talk about it. All I see is four dicks and balls pointed in every direction ready to go. <laughs> That's all I see. That's all I've ever seen. And ever, whenever I look at the Slack app, it's just like four dicks covering all angles. Oh, that's oh, old. Nice. Hash mark new. Four dicks coming at you from all sides. <laughs> like it's, it's only a, one ball though. Perky ball. No, well, it's a profile photo. It's right. a side. It's a profile. Yeah. It's oh, two I see. There. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Sorry, that's uh, awful. <laughs> that's this is what I, see. <laughs> I was worried that when I showed the uh, the the the, uh, the anal passage dick that I, I would be the only one that saw it because I knew it was like a slack thing. But I'm glad that you saw it. What were you going to say, Gab? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, so what were you talking about? You, uh, we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to successfully put this shirt to bed, but it's too successful to do so? Well, no. we're not throwing it. I just meant like us talking about it. Just okay. like because we've brought it up so many times. That it's like. Yeah, like this week's episode aired and everybody was talking about it. So I went and listened to it. And then Nick posted next week's episode and I started to proof that. And we start talking about it like in the first five minutes. And so as I was being funny when I came into pleasantries, I said, hey, can we agree not to talk about the anal passage shirt this week? Because it's been like five weeks in a row. And then yeah. Andrew goes, I have something to, to say about it. Well, oh, I had okay. the same thought. I had the exact same, but it's just this last insight. So now we're on the, the um, rest. On the four dicks and balls app, someone in a in merch said, "Well, originally they were sort of posting updates as we were climbing towards the top of the shirt list. We were like at number three and then number two, and now the update was we're stomping on the grave of the number two shirt in terms of how many shirts we sold." <laughs> so stupid. We have an amazing community. <laughs> we do. It's so good. Oh, it's just the most amazing. I haven't actually oh, asked. Damn. I haven't talked to Jack properly about. How he really feels about it. I feel like we've gotten a good read from Jeff. Yeah, he's had enough time now that he'll he'll be okay. Uh, I'm sure. I hope so. I gotta fucking go to Florida with him in two days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're oh. not recording one of these for like a while. One yeah. of these? Well, we're uh, taking like you know you know how weeks, we're currently right? doing a show and not just hanging out. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I, I'm talking about. Eric, we've been hanging out so much recently. It's hard for it's, me to tell. It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah jeff is gone like this week next week so we aren't recording again until like june june God, really holy yeah. fuck yeah. Wow, well maybe good? we could maybe we could record this. sometime next week like early before i go out of town let's do it we can do tuesday i guess we can figure this out after the show <laughs> no this is great <laughs> no, no this is no great time, supplemental like, content you are uh, you monday and wednesday you are busy you are free tuesday afternoon if you i am get all in all, all about Gavin. Face next. How's your day. Tuesday afternoon? Looking, okay. looking. Uh -huh. Oh, pff. open, completely yeah. open. You want to do three o'clock, or is that gonna press some people with the time they have to be done with things? Three's fine. Three's great for me. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Great. By the way, Eric, you've gotten so much better at your job. Last time we did this, it Thanks, took you man. Like thirty minutes to schedule it. You just did that in <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I seized the opportunity. Yeah. I wasn't Why waiting to we do that done. last time. Hey, when do you guys want to do MVP <laughs> two? The thing that Jeff said we should do soon. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh huh. Yep. Uh huh. I mean, I'm. Uh, I can do it. I, I right, could, right. You can oh, do it. I can do it Sat Sunday. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I could do it next Tuesday, but we're recording. Face, uh. <laughs> <laughs> soon, Andrew, we'll do that one soon. Yes, you wouldn't. You wouldn't get on a jet ski. Would you let me tow you on a jet ski? I. In what context? What are we doing here? Am I in like a little? Am I in a floaty boat thing? Yeah, like a floaty a, boat. A tube? You're in a, you're an in inner a, tube. You're in an inflatable swan. I would not. If we're in swan territory, I do not <laughs> trust you in the inner tube. No. 
Uh, uh, if, if it got, if I'm not, I, I love you, Gavin. If things got real at that swan, you're cutting that rope. You're leaving me behind. <laughs> I don't trust it. I don't think I would cut. I, I think it depends. It's not like we're climbing. If I, I, if, I if, if it was between the phantom or me, I'm getting left in the water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm absolutely planning on buying one of these for my jet ski when I buy a jet ski. <laughs> they, have those, they have those all the time on okay. Lake Austin. People are fucking having a blast on them. You oh get my. me some, some pepperoni great, sticks? It's called a Great Big Mabel, and if, if, since it's an audio podcast, and it's, a, uh, it's like an inflatable sofa that you put Dude, on. Eric's water adjacent, that is very adjacent for him. Very Eric adjacent. would love that, and he would love a bunch of dudes like leaning on it around as he was on top of it. I just think that th I could definitely put a cooler on that thing and have a bunch of drinks while I listen to Sublime while sitting on the Great Big Mabel. 100%. If you give me some pepperoni sticks and two butterfly nets, I'm ready to go into swan territory with that setup. I like there's enough room to move around. I'm <laughs> prepared. Nets. I need one for each arm. Then I'm ready. All right. So we're going to. That's how you get a swan to break your arm. <laughs> we're going to do this. That's going to happen. I will buy a jet ski. I will buy a great big Mabel. Andrew will come to Austin at some point. So it will have to happen. <laughs> I am so nervous. <laughs> this is going from outside of the realm of uh, like a funny uh, potential to I want let, let, let's 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 fucking put pen to paper and let's cement this. Let's do let's get this done. I'm willing I to do the hard part and buy the jet ski. Uh, yeah, I'm in. OK, I'm in. I can't wait for this. I can't wait to see you guys get attacked. I can't wait to go into swan <laughs> territory myself. It's going to be a great time. I think if you're on an inflatable swan, it will make the swan may way more aggressive. <laughs> Or actually, what if you could, great dude, what if you could make a swan fall in love with you? <laughs> what? What if you could transfix the yeah. swan? What if it looks at you and oh, it's like, shit. it's the most gorgeous swan I've ever seen. What if we bring a mirror? What would it do? <laughs> would it just rush at itself? What would be the process? Would it psych itself out? We need to bring a giant mirror. <laughs> that's, that's, you're just asking for trouble. That giant swan inflatable. Is that dude, a Photoshop? That's none of that's real. That's a hundred percent of Photoshop. Not know. a single piece of that photo is real. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Green Go Giant Inflatable Swan Pool Float Lounger. It in <laughs> seventy-five inches. It's a big one, dude. I, I think if we went fast that. enough on the jet ski, we could get that thing to take off. Oh, hundred percent. You mean get it airborne? <gasps> oh, <laughs> hold on. Don't worry. I found a better one. What if we go the other route? What if we intimidate the swan? Because we're in this. <laughs> <laughs> this swan is the size of my house. Look at the crown. The queen it's definitely so owns that one. Big. <laughs> <laughs> there are what is that, five people, six people on that swan with room to spare. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. How, that's going to be like a thousand dollars. Yeah, How much dude, is that I would swan? imagine. Uh, that's the nine foot crown wearing swan. <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> the swan banging its head on a bridge. <laughs> oh, it's from Sam's Club. Uh, you can get it right now. It holds up to six people. Hold on. It's on Sam's Club. Uh, like the snacks membership place? Yeah. Snacks membership place. Well, I'll have to find it. It's not showing up on the website, but uh, that's where it was uh, from. So it's probably like 500 bucks. Wow. Sounds like a deal. Oh, here we go. Shop now. Hold on. Does that work? I spent more on a battle bus. This fucking swan's gone, dude. Oh, that's oh no. Oh. I'll find I'm it. I'll find it. Emotions. Emotions. If, 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 if Sam's doesn't have it, eBay will. We'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> that could be us. I never would have thought that we would have a swan attack episode with Jeff, but I'm glad we did. What a great time. I'm glad you're a water guy, Jeff. As Gavin said, you've brought so much great content to the show by purely <laughs> being you. <laughs> Thanks, man. Well, I, uh, I am looking forward to continuing water and water act, uh, uh, related activities. So uh, hopefully I'll have tons of new stories, non-snake related stories to tell. <laughs> I can handle just about anything else in the water. Just no snakes. Yeah. I, what about an octopus? Uh, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about that in Lake Austin. I think I'm probably That's safe from, from octopi. So yeah. specifically the animals in that lake. It's, it's not all animals outside of snakes you feel confident taking. Uh, I mean, I've spent a lot of time in the ocean, and I've never really worried about octopi uh, before. Uh, maybe if I was like in a, like a deep sea fisherman, I'd be afraid of like a giant 
prehistoric octopus like ripping my my boat apart but like close to shore i think i'm probably fine i think i got chased by an octopus once in the water i got chased that's by something gross what is that oh it's eric posted a it's a snake inflatable snake Disgusting. inflatable yeah that looks ridiculous. like eric it does. <laughs> it's that's me intimidating the other snakes when I go in the water. <laughs> it, but it, it's like it's close but different. It's like Hollywood Eric. Like if there was an ABC Family movie that featured Eric as a character in it, and they hired an actor to play Eric, that is Eric. <laughs> absolutely it's like, it's Eric, but a little cleaned up. Yeah, a little bit, a little cleaned up. It's pretty accurate. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to Canada? Well, we're going to I Vegas. I feel like you November. ask that every week. <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. So do I. I want you guys to go. I have got a water spot. Love to show you guys. <laughs> My number one spot. I got a little secret water area. I'm very excited. My go to. Number one ranking. Should we yeah, close this? Gonna... How did we open the episode? Where did this episode start? Uh, that's it, so start, much it started with you uh, apologizing. So say you're yeah. sorry <laughs> to end okay. it also. And then we'll go. Yeah. On. Apologize uh, our way out okay. of this. <clears throat> uh, kind, kind sir, Jeff, uh-huh. Gavin. Was that cut out at the beginning part? Is that going to just be I hope so, but it you should apologize for saying it again. Well, I apologize twice. I double apologize. I apologize for my apology, <laughs> and <laughs> I, I apologize for the kind sir voice. I regret saying it. <laughs> are you, are you going to go from that into the outro, or are you just going to stop? Oh, I thought that was the, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, throw five, five stars, 10 yeah, stars. If you don't mind, <laughs> throw five, five, however many put, you can spare as many as you have in these trying times. Um, thank Stop you for buying listening. The shirt. Yeah. We're not going to talk about the shirt anymore <laughs> for a bit. Uh, subscribe. Like we have a YouTube channel. We have a Twitter account and Instagram account and the photos will probably be on the Instagram. Look at it there. I don't do this. This isn't my job, typically. I'm not the host. You're I'm not it. even a friend. I'm You're not even it. a friend in the Keep bio. Keep doing it. Go it's the way. illegal for me to be here. Take I'm out of this. This isn't my thing. I'm going home with it. Thank you for listening. Nailed it. Hey, guys. Superfan Jack on a 10-day contract here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Jeff bought a new TV. Andrew falls down the stair. Let's talk tubs again. Panton has left the chat. Jeff talks bread clips. A very special guest joins the episode, and once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face.